Okay, we got us a, stri a striped skunk today on the trap line. I know a lot of people, when they catch a skunk, they freak out. They're like, oh my God, what am I going to do with it? They try to get it out of the trap and they just leave it lay. Um, skunks can be pretty profitable. You can tan the hides and sell them that way. They're worth, you know, four or five bucks if you sell them to a fur buyer. Um, you can get the essence out of the glands and you can sell that. You can see we got him in a 160, so he's kind of, his glands are pretty full. So we're going to show you how to extract that. We're going to show you skin and flesh and stretching, just like we always do. But uh, this guy stinks a little bit. All your skunks are probably going to stink a little bit, some more than others. But we're going to show you it's really easy and really quick to make this skunk not smell at all. So uh, we're going we're gonna to do that for you right now. What we use is basically the ingredients you can get at, at any store, hard, uh, grocery store or pharmacy or anything else. You need hydrogen peroxide, 3%. You want to buy a pint of it. The thing you're going to need is regular baking soda. You're going to need uh, right around a quarter of a cup. And then the last thing you're going to need is some dish soap, Dawn dish soap, or generic dish soap is fine. And then you're going to need some water. This really works good, you know, if your dog would get in the skunk. Um, it's okay to use this on them, but just don't, don't get it in her eyes. And then once you use this mix once, you can't save it. It's like a volatile solution. So you're just, just one shot deal. So if you can and you're, gonna, you're really going to get in a skunk trapping like we do, we save up, you know, four, five, six skunks, you know, that are freeze them and then we do it all at once. But today we're just going to do this one skunk. Then we're going to let them dry and then we'll move on to skinning and flushing. So what you want to do is first thing you want to do, you want to get about a quarter cup of baking soda. And then we're going to add our hydrogen peroxide. Just pour that all in there. Now this mixture is going to like carbonate or foam up a little bit um, and that's really what it's supposed to do so don't uh, don't worry too much about that and then you want about a teaspoon of dish soap and we're going to take mix that up get it good and mixed You can use a rag um, or a sponge or you know anything that you will soak it up. Then you take your skunk and you just start washing him. You want to get him good and get the solution on there good and kind of scrub it in. Just like you, you know, if you're doing your dog, like I said, you can do your dog or your cat if they get in the the skunk you can use this solution on them just just keep it out of their eyes it's okay for you know to get in their ears and stuff like that but not in their eyes you're going to be amazed once you do this how this skunk doesn't smell at all i mean he will smell zero zero smell like i said it's kind of a a little time consuming when you do this that's why we try to save it up and do a couple skunks at a time if you trap them like we do and you catch them in the in the 160s it's it's usually not very bad but I know guys that catch them in a foot trap and you know they kinda smell after they shoot them or whatever many or to get him in a cage trap and um, if he smells really really bad you can take in the skunk and the, the whole skunk and the trap and everything and drop it in a uh, in a, uh, a really cold river and leave it in that river for a couple of days that'll get rid of a lot a lot of the smell and then you can come in and and do this now it's just like a a wet dog, you know. To, it's going to smell as you're doing it. It's going to smell. Now you can see it's really starting to foam up and get like oxygenated is what they call it. 
And you just want to rub that in real good. Make sure you do a really good job. One of these batches will do basically one skunk. So the tail is probably the most important thing to get. That's kind of right where their their gun barrel is. So when they spray, that's like I say, just keep working it in. Give them a get them good and and worked up. Plus, this will uh, this will clean up them, kind of get that little bit of that yellow out of them, them white uh, things. And if you want to get them mounted, you know your taxidermist will really appreciate this that you you do this before you take him the skunk. So, well, now we got him all pretty well cleaned up. We're gonna take and just rinse him off in the water. Oh yeah, here, smell that. Can't even smell them, see? Don't you wish we had smell-o-vision? <laughs> no, he really, he doesn't smell at all anymore, so. Now, when you hang this to dry, hang him. This is one of the only critters that I hang by the back foot to let him dry. Reason is, I don't want to have him hanging by his front feet and then his guts and stuff will settle down and it'll put pressure on them glands right there and they'll leak. The glands are right on each side of the the anus, so you don't wanna you don't wanna have that leaking down on you. So we'll get him kind of squidgied off and we'll get him hung up and see how nice he's coming out nice and white. Skunks are actually they got some awesome, nice, long fur on their tails. They're, they're pretty cool. Just the fur market for them is, uh, you know, it's kind of a novelty. But skunks are pretty easy to catch, especially later in the year. You can get out and do a little scouting, and you find a den, and you set up right by it. You know, it's not uncommon to catch um, eight, nine skunks out of one den. So... All right, so that's what we do to clean them off. And remember, it's a, a pint of hydrogen peroxide, a quarter cup of baking soda, about a tablespoon of uh, Dawn dish soap. You know, mix the solution up, get him all soaked up really good, and then uh, rinse him off in a bucket and then hang him out to dry. We'll let him dry overnight. Tomorrow we'll show you uh, how to extract the glands how to take the essence out of it, and then we'll skin him and put him up on a board and dry him just like we do our coons, so. Hey, we got our skunk all cleaned up yesterday. Smells not at all, he's perfect, so. We're gonna, we're gonna show you what we gotta do to skin, flesh. We're gonna take care of the glands. Um, there's really no reason to be afraid of skunks. So, the main thing you gotta worry about is right here. This is danger zone. This is where we don't want a lot of pressure. You don't want to do no crazy jabbing the knife in, nothing. So what we're going to do, first thing I always do is I always take the glands out. Because then while I'm skinning, I don't have to worry about putting pressure on them or anything like that. <clears throat> With a very sharp knife or scalpel or a razor blade, what you want to do is just get barely under the skin. Just like that. And you want to go around this little area right here that doesn't have any hair. And we want to go up just a little bit, just like that. 
Now we're not, we're just sticking the tip of the knife blade in there. We're not plunging the knife in, we're not doing anything crazy. So like I said, this is the this is the danger zone. This is the zone right here that's gonna your wife's gonna shoot you if you make a mistake. So just like that. Then we're gonna take we're gonna go right up the leg. Just like you would if you're doing a coon or anything else. There, once you get past that, you know, once you get up here with your cut, you get out of the danger zone, then you can, you know, go to town with your knife and get it right up to the leg. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Just, like I said, just go slow. Just barely get your knife in. Don't be putting any pressure and then once you get past you know you're an inch or two past that that area that kind of the pressure's off you can you can just skin them up just like that all right there we go now we're gonna slowly skin I'm gonna use my real sharp knife there because I don't want to cut the hide my razor blade you just want to pull up be very delicate you can see all that fat. You just want to start taking that, peeling that uh, the hide away. That's not his gland, that's his gonad. Don't be all freaked out here. This is where you got to really like I said, take your time. This, when I say, when I, you know, skunks are time consuming, not really, but they are time consuming right here at the, the, the gun barrel end or the business end of the skunk. You gotta just take your, take your time. You know, people say, well, what do you, uh, what's a skunk worth? Well, you can get, uh, if you sell the hide to a fur buyer, you know, you're probably going to get three, four, five bucks. Um, but if you tan it, just with a home tan kit, Riddles 1000 or whatever, you know, you can, uh, it makes a really unique wall hanger. Or you can send them in and get them tanned and then you can, uh, you can sell them yourself like on eBay and stuff like that. People buy them for the novelty of it. And then you got the essence, which if you're like us, I mean, we trap. Uh, we specifically go out and trap skunks here late season. Um, later on, you know, we can find a nice den and you can uh, you can get, shoot, eight, nine skunks off a nice, nice uh, denning area. So you find a few of them and. And you know, we take in all the essence, you know, the essence, man, you can get 20, 20 bucks an ounce, something like that. 30 bucks an ounce. So, you know, they can be quite lucrative. Plus, um, these are really awesome. The carcasses are awesome. Coyote and, and fox bait. And you can use the essence yourself and, you know, as a as a, a call lure later in the year for for fox and coyotes um, so you know it all has its all has its use that's for sure all right now we're going to let's get this up here a little bit more very carefully right there this glob of meat looking stuff this is the gland that you're looking at it's right you got one on each side of the anus so you want to be very careful when you're going here I like to work from the top 
um, just because that's kind of where they're located. This is the top of the skunk here, and they're right at the base of the tail. But that's what we're looking at. That's what we're trying to get out right here. We're not trying to get out. That's what we are going to get out. We're not going to. So just that's why you want to really, really sharp knife. Even if you want one of them little razor blades work really good too, you know, if you don't have one of these knives. But don't, uh, don't dick around with your skin and knife. Because if you don't have it razor sharp, you know, you can have, you can have an issue here. You just want to be touching that. And right there is the, the gun barrel here. All right. Same thing on top here. Just want to work your way around. Now, I've yet to hit one of these glands. I've never hit one. But like I say, I use a very sharp knife or a razor blade. And I just take my, just take your time. You know, you can take after we, after we suck the essence out of these glands, you throw these babies down in a dirt hole. Awesome, awesome fox bait. All right, coming out very nice here. All right, there we go. That thing you see right there that's the end of his intestine that hooks into his uh, anus there we go there's the glands now this skunk is basically gonna be safe to skin you can put pressure nothing's gonna spray so we're gonna we're gonna hang him up and we're just gonna keep going and show you how to, what we do to take care of the glands so we'll get him hung up there all right now that's what we're looking at. There's his anus. If you look inside of there, you can see there's a, the two openings that he would have to, they're, they're right, right there is the opening that it would shoot you. But anyways, we usually have a bigger syringe. Well, for some reason we didn't uh, have one. You need yourself a glass jar, metal cap, um, once you get done, you can fill this up. You can take and dip this in wax and then fill a mason jar with dirt, stick it inside there, put dirt on top, screw the cap on, bury it out in the backyard. The wife won't even know what's out there. She won't even want to shoot you. But so what we're going to do here now, all you're going to want to do is slowly don't squeeze these and poke or you're going to have a mess on your hands. Just slowly go in there. Once you're inside, you want to start drawing that essence. And again, don't do this... Uh, don't do this where, uh, you know, in your, in your kitchen or something, or you'll probably end up with a divorce or single. Or it's probably why I stayed single so many years. But the one I got, girlfriend I got now, she sticks with me pretty good. All right, that baby is just about done. He had some pretty full glands. We'll get a little. Try to see if we can get a little bit more out of there. Oh. Pretty much drain. So like I tell you guys, man, there's nothing Nothing to be scared about doing these skunks. Just take your time And you'll be fine Don't get in a hurry don't get careless Usually, like I said, I got a bigger syringe. I can get this all in one shot. I'm gonna put a rag under here just in case. See that? I almost got careless. I almost knocked the dang jar over. You 
you can get these syringes um, and the big ones and they like any farm store feed store stuff like that they got them all right pretty much empty And that's it, you know. Some of the bigger skunks, you get a little bit more in there. You know, some you get a little bit less. There's about a, about a little less than average skunk, I would say. Now you have this, like I said. You can take and cut that in half or leave it like that. Throw that right down in a dirt hole. There's probably nothing better for coyote or fox bait right there than a skunk glands. So we're going to set that there. Um sure you put a cap on your syringe you don't want to be poking yourself with it but that's that that's the skunk that's uh, the essence and the business end and you know now like I said there's nothing to be scared of doing skunks guys don't uh, don't fear them actually when you're doing them they will give you a little bit of that alone time you probably need because nobody wants to come around and be messing with you let's get a little more light on the subject there for you for you guys now basically we're gonna skin it when you skin this skunk um, it's just like skinning a raccoon or anything else you know just ring around the foot I'll we'll just keep so like I said just the way we skin a raccoon or anything else is how we skin a skunk and now that like I said the glands are gone you don't have nothing to worry about you can you can put all kinds of pressure on them and everything else. That's why I do the glands first because then I don't have to worry about anything happening the rest of the time I'm skinning. And the skunks, man, they skin really easy. They flesh easy. And between me and you, man, they got some pretty nice fur. And, uh, you know, we got, uh, we run that late season skunk line along with our coon buckets. And it's actually pretty fun to catch a lot of these buggers. They're on, uh, definitely wear gloves when you're doing this. Um, skunks are also the number one carrier of rabies. And yes, you can get it from skinning a skunk. They do not have to bite you. Just, I mean, like I said, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of the essence. Don't be afraid of the rabies. So just just respect it don't uh, don't go in it hog wild they have a really skunks have a really fat meaty meaty tail you guys see me eat a lot of stuff that I show you but uh, this is one thing we're not gonna be showing you no know, recipes on. I ain't got no secret way of cooking a skunk. But like I said, they make such awesome bait, and that, that's another reason why we trap them, is they just make such great coyote and fox bait. They're definitely worth pursuing. Tail. You know, look at the claws in these things. It's pretty cool. They're made for. They're definitely made for digging. Kind of like. Almost like a badger. I don't use the the mechanical skinner and the grips on it on a skunk because they're just like I said, they're so easy to skin. And this is how most guys, I mean, this is how when I grew up, this is how we skinned coon and everything. We didn't have them, we didn't have fancy skinners. We get a little bit more snow out there. Um, we'll do a video on specifically trapping skunks which you guys got to look for when you're when we look for the dens and stuff like that because like i say you find a den i mean you can load up on them you know six eight ten skunks out of each one and uh it don't take long go in and gang set and 
got the ear now we're at the eye just same thing you know stay as close as you can if you mess it up don't freak out I mean you're not working with a million dollar hide here so if you're gonna skin it if you're gonna do this for a taxidermy you know you're just gonna have to shop around for a taxidermist and uh, they skin them totally different but so what we're gonna do we're just gonna tan them for a wall hanger so again the bottom jaw we don't need I'm gonna cut that off get down here to the nose that's it done so I'll turn him out here and show you what he looks like definitely a fat skunk but look at that doesn't that look cool we'll tan that baby up hang it up on the wall I mean they got some pretty high nice double skunk okay Give me a second, we're gonna be uh, back. We're gonna go over here, get it on the flesher. Uh, we're gonna flesh them out. We're gonna put them on a board, show you how that's done. So uh, give me a second to get that on our set. skunk. Got them all skinned out, took care of the glands, took care of the essence. Now we gotta flesh him. So we turn him back inside out here. We're gonna get him on our beam. I use the, you guys have seen my coon videos and everything, I use the blue English system. So. Most of uh, the work is going to be, you know, just he's got a lot of fat. We're going to do a lot of scraping. But again, you only got to go from basically the ears down. Get our sharp knife here. Tighter here. You can use a dull knife. You see how if you'd use it you'd have a hard time getting all of that stuff because other people are asking my coon videos and everything why I don't use a sharp knife all the way why I don't use a dull knife all the way each one has their place here so we just work our way down nice and slow the shoulders areas uh, and top of the head that's where it's tough and then all of a sudden you'll feel the fat start to get where it comes off pretty easy that's all the further I go with it sharp part of my knife they're not like a coon they don't have that really thick hard gristly fat but they do have some pretty tough fat up around their neck and back area there's his ear we want to, like I said, from the ear down. Skunks are also probably uh, really good to have learners learn how to flesh because, you know, like I said, they're not a million dollar pelt. <laughs> so, now you want to be careful when you get down to here where his leg is because if you go too hard, you'll, you'll cut that leg. So, we want to stay, you know, I stop about an inch from that leg that's where i stop with my sharp knife go around we got that little bit of meat right there on his cheek get that off now just like in a coon this area right here you're going to be able to do with the dull knife it's actually very thin it's the under part of their chin and in their belly is very thin so we don't want to even screw around right there with a sharp knife you just do it with the dull knife Ear. I didn't cut a hole there. That was his ear. I just cut the bottom part of the cartilage off. And again, there's that leg. So you want to be careful when you're coming down. You know, stop about an inch from that leg. Go up here. They're not that uh, hard to flesh. So there, we pretty much got that. Now we'll switch over to the dull knife. And the dull knife is just a matter of raking that fat off. And you don't want to go too hard in that belly area. Turn him, get him right along the back here. Now 
nice and prime, that's for sure. Really got some white leather on this guy. You got a few bite marks. That's okay. Keep rolling that fat down and get there by the tail. And then I'll swear I'll stop because I'm going to move him up. But I'm going to spin it around here. Go right over the top of that leg. Get a little start underneath it. It's okay to leave that because we're going to flip him up there and then we'll we'll get this on top of the beam and take care of that. Peel that. See, just peel that fat off. Now, be careful in here because here's his nipple or, you know, the nipple area. Especially on the females, you know, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. And you don't need a lot of pressure to take that fat off the belly. It comes off really easy. <clears throat> get that leg. Get right underneath that leg there. Just take your time in that belly. You don't want to tear them nipples. I'm actually kind of going slow for you guys so you can see how it's done. They actually go, you can go really fast with a skunk. Now there's under that chin and the neck area. You can see how the dull knife works really good right there. And it's really thin and there wasn't, there wasn't much fat in that area. So if you went in there with a sharp knife, you just tear, you take a risk of cutting a hole in that really thin area. You can see I already got a hole wore through there in the belly pretty thin so but that's okay you won't get docked for it if you sell them and like I said if you're tanning them to sell for a wall hanger it's all fine I mean once you make a hole there ain't much you can do about it but like I said that belly is just really thin on these skunks so you got to take it easy get around under that leg just like that Got him done. Get to see the finish line. It's getting closer. That, that right there is okay. That was his, where his penis was. You're going to end up with a hole there, but we're going to trim it off for the inspection window. See, I got a little bit of fat left right up there. We want to get off. Now we'll get down here to the tail. That tail, this is not fat off the tail. This was the fat that was up here. It's just peeled down. So just take your time so you don't rip the tail off. tough then you might have to get your knife out it's getting right there towards the end of the tail the end of his tail off. That's just not what we wanted to do, but he'll be all right. They have very, very, very fatty, muscly tails, so...
There we go. All right. So, he's still, still going to look really nice. Their tail's long enough. I mean, I took just bobbed the end off of there, so he's still going to look good. Next, we got a small, really small. Uh, these are my possum and skunk stretchers. They're like a small coon board. I just want to get him on there. Get everything straight, just like we always do. And we'll get some pins. Start down there, I start at the, the bottom of the tail. You can pleat these tails too. But, see so you got a little, little chunk of meat I want to get off right here. There we go. But since I, like I said, I tan mine and sell them for wall hangers. I don't sell these to a fur buyer. So I want to pin that tail nice and open so when I go and tan it, I make sure I got it. When I dry it, it dries really nice. Just keep pinning it up here. Like that. So it's nice and open, got a lot of fur in the back. Then we'll come around here. Um, if you're gonna do this for to sell to a fur buyer, which I'll do because I'll do it on this one, you got that penis hole. You want to make yourself a really, really nice inspection window there. Kind of clean that up. Um, if you're selling it, if you're gonna tan it, you don't have to do that. It doesn't really matter. But now you can see his pe the penis hole is right there. So we cut trim that out and made us a really Nice inspection window. And that, we'll get a belly board. Get his leg straight on there. Get us a belly board, put a belly board in there. And, uh, that's it. It's gonna be all ready to go. I see. I, I don't know if I thought I had two in there. Must have fell out. Make sure to go in there. Good. I'll spread that tail out. Make sure that tail is uh, spread open to dry. Otherwise, it'll uh, it'll end up slipping and the hair will fall off, and we don't want that. There we go. Use a few extra pins if you have to. Let it go. Last one. So that's it, guys. There's a skunk. He's all done. He's all ready to go. Nice prime. We're going to let him dry, and then uh, maybe we'll do a video on tanning them. I'm sure we will, but uh, that's how I take care of my skunks. Like I said, basically, I'm after the essence. Tan the hide. Um, so everything is good. But don't be afraid of them skunks. They are fun. They're money makers, and uh, you don't have a lot of competition, so... That's it.